the sheriff won't be seen tonight, so we can bring you a very special episode of The Gen X Files. Welcome to the Gen X Files. I'm Jim. I'm Adam. And today is another little edition of For the the Stepdads. Sit back, grab a drink, join your stepdads, Jim and Adam. (laughs) We would be awesome. I was thinking about this. We would be really good stepdads. Yeah. I mean, I can't have children, so that that would be, I would have to be a stepdad. Well, regardless, I don't think that really takes into account your good or bad stepdadness, whether or not you can. I'm sure I would be spawn a, a your good own father. I I'm sure I would. No, but I I don't know if you you'd be a great father, but that's not why. Right. I'm saying we'd be good stepdads because if you were a kid, you'd want us as stepdads. Yes, hundred percent. Because it's like we are literally giant children. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it, it would. Be, the only thing would be we would always be playing on your video game system. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and doing your mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. For All the right. love of Murphy. We're going to talk about Eddie Murphy stuff that we didn't cover in the, the two movies and his, his SNL career. Yeah. Uh, pretty much everything else. Not everything else. But we talk about some crap, what Eddie Murphy meant to us. A lot of his stand-up stuff we didn't really talk about. Um, I love this part of the show because we always talk about what we're going to talk about, but we never, we talk, never talk about, about it. it. Yeah. We are going to talk about it. I wrote everything down. So we yeah. well, You always do. It it's just I have the mind of a, a two-year-old. I have the mind of a two-month-old terrier is That's what I true. have. That's true. That's true. Um, well, you know, it's February, man. A lot of stuff was packed in this little baby month. It is. There's a lot of things that happen. At Valentine's Day. At Valentine's, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, what? what is just, you... That just makes me miss Kevin and Bean. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Valentine's. Um, what'd you guys do? What'd you and Phoebe do? Uh, we had dinner. That was about it. I we don't really celebrate Valentine's Day. You made scones. I did. I made uh, chocolate white chocolate strawberry scones. They're good. They I, very I stole one. Yeah. Even though I'm not your Valentine, I told you to take. It's not stealing if stole I'm it. giving it to you. Stole it. Uh, but she made this uh, amazing uh, acorn squash like turkey thing. It was really good. It was really good. Nice acorn squash is in season for another week or so, and then it's it's out. I watched Antlers. <laughs> That's a great Valentine's movie. Uh, I was going to watch. I was like, oh, I'll watch a romantic comedy. I watched that um, Charlie Day. I want you back. I want you back. I watched that romantic yeah. comedy on, I think it's on Amazon? Yes, Amazon. And uh, what's the actress? I love her. Uh, Jenny Slate. Jenny Slate. Yeah. Oh, she is so absolutely hilarious. She's One of my absolute funny. favorites. so funny. Does so, so much funny. great voice work, but she's just she's, amazing. But I really yeah. enjoyed it. I'm not, I'm a cynic a bit. I don't know about love. <laughs> It takes a lot for me to enjoy. I just don't like the cookie cutter BS stuff, but this was yeah. fun and they were so good, so good together. And there was like really fun moments. It was almost two hours and I still was like, wow, oh, this nice. is good. It's nice. good. I I'll have to, it. I'll check that out. Yeah. I didn't watch it for Valentine's. I watched Antlers, which is a right. horror movie with Jesse Plemons uh, and uh, Carrie Russell, I think. Sh- sure. Yeah, Carrie Russell. I... <laughs> um, it's fine. It's fine. Okay. It's about the Wendigo. Oh, okay. Um, okay. Okay. It's I've heard it. I, it was on some like best horror movie list for uh, the year or something. Uh, so maybe I, if it I, was kind of a boring year. Out of the eight horror movies that got released <laughs> last year, it was number eight. I haven't seen a lot lately, and I wanted to get back into it. So I, I figured it'd be a good. Haven't finished Nightmare Alley yet, have you? No, no. I got halfway through that and got really <laughs> bored. I don't know. I like. I really like Guillermo del Toro. I love Carney stuff, and you know that the like oh yeah thirties yeah. Carney. Oh, that's thing. cool. I didn't even know that's what it was about. Well, that's where it starts, and then. It's just like, then they go <laughs> off, and I don't know. When they left the carny, I was just kind of like, eh, you know, uh, maybe they go back, I don't know, but... Uh, I'm not even going to go into how much I'm not a fan of Guillermo. I know, Guerrero, we've discussed so this before. I, I'm just going to let that one go, Mum. Uh, I try, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, the Oscars, speaking of movies, the Oscars... Yeah, Nightmare Alley was nominated for Best Picture, so you need to get on that. I'll finish it, I'll um, finish it. I just, you know what, I'm not... I, this yeah. is no offense to him, he's a, an extremely talented, smart guy... I've seen him do interviews in French, oh, yeah, superb yeah. French, just like yeah. just a, a really charming, talented, awesome guy. Bradley Cooper, yeah, I'm sure he's just a dreamy man and a He seems like to be he'd with. be fun to work with. Like he, I've seen interviews with him that I, I'm just kind of like, I just, I, he's not right for this part. Oh, okay. I okay. just don't think. I just, it just, I don't know, man. It's, it's just, I'm getting so I'm uh, not going to be surprised if I don't like it. <laughs> I'm, I <laughs> want, I'm. In my old age, I really go into stuff wanting to like it. Like, I yeah, want, yeah. I'm looking forward to things. You know, I'm trying sure, to look sure. forward to things. No. <laughs> uh, like, Free Guy, I'm excited to see that. Yeah, when it yeah, comes yeah. out later this month, probably. It'll be out by the time this 
airs, but uh, yeah. But it's just like I don't know, man. I'm just so disappointed. Yeah, it was so. Nightmare Alley was nominated for Best Picture along with nine other movies. Uh, all of the ones that have been nominated, I've only seen one of them. What are the uh, other nominees? That you the other remember? nominees were. Hold on, I have a list. <laughs> Get a reading like it's cheaters on. Uh, the ten movies that were nominated for Best Picture were Belfast. Didn't see it. Uh, Coda, which is available on Apple TV Plus. Didn't see it. Uh, Don't look up. Saw it. Which is the only one that I've seen. Uh, Drive My Car, which is going to be available. It's a Japanese movie, available now on HBO Max at the end of the month. Didn't see uh, it. Actually, about a week from you listening to this right now. Oh, wow. Uh, Dune, which was available on HBO Max, and uh, I didn't watch it. <laughs> it was fine. It was I'm just sure. fine. I'm it's sure. just, you know, it's a bunch of sand. Yeah. Well, they're doing a sequel. Well, you know, there's a lot of sand to deal it's, with. It's a Dune Worms. 2, now even more Harkonnen. Dune 2. Dunier. D- yeah. Uh, King Richard. Now with more sand. <laughs> King Richard, which also was available on HBO Max. I saw that. I thought Will Smith was great. Yeah. And the, yeah. the, the, the actresses that played the daughters. The ladies, different yeah. Um, yeah. Stages of their existence. Right, right. I thought it was very well done. I, you know, I think they glossed over some of the more problematic parts sure, of sure. The Gentleman. But that's not what the movie was about. Right, right. Uh, Licorice Pizza. Which is still in the theaters. Want to see it? Haven't seen it. That is the only one on this list that I actually really want to see. I I love Paul Thomas Anderson, so like I'm a hu- I'm a huge fan of his. Oh yeah, I would love to see that. Uh, also with Bradley Cooper. Uh, well, it's more of an ensemble. Yeah, it's but I mean, not, it's not. It, he's a supporting part, and he got. I think he got nominated for supporting actor. Look, for, I don't know what it is about him. He's a great <laughs> actor, and he's very talented. Yeah. I don't. I'm not. You know, I'm not like. It's, yeah, I'm an outlier, yeah. baby, and sure, I don't know what sure. it is. It's just probably some personal grudge. It's probably just like he was so good at playing an a hole in Wedding Crashers that I just can't shake yeah, it off. Yeah, you know? I, probably, I probably. Know. Hey, man, Bradley, if you're listening, don't <laughs> don't, don't bother up. me, baby. <laughs> don't bother with me. Uh, Nightmare Alley, which is uh, amazingly enough available on two different streaming services. Yeah, it's which weird. Just blows my mind. That's happening a lot. Like, yeah. It's on Hulu and HBO Max. Also, that. Uh, uh, Something's wrong with Fred or whatever that animated uh, Ron's movie. Gone Ron's wrong. Gone Wrong. Which is on Disney Plus and yeah. HBO Max. Yes. Yeah. And they're also doing that with Free Guy is going to be on yeah. both, oh, both really? of those platforms really? as well. But Ron's Gone Wrong was not nominated for Best Picture. Was it nominated for Best Animated? I think it was, actually, if I remember correctly. What should win that 100% is The Mitchells versus The Machines. Yes, totally, totally. Without a doubt. Favorite animated movie. Uh, although other people would argue Encanto. Um, but well, those people would be wrong. Okay. Uh, and then uh, the last two would be The Power of the Dog, which is available on Netflix. Uh, talked about that talked enough. About it. I do want to see it just because it was nominated. But... It's not, look, I'm not, it's not a bad movie at all. Yeah. It's just not a very entertaining movie. Most of Jane Campion movies aren't. I don't, the piano I thought was really entertaining. Like, yeah, the piano it's... is a good story. It's interesting. And Anna Paquin is a great character. Yeah, very feisty yeah. and interesting. There just wasn't. Jesse Plemons is really good, as always. Yeah. Kirsten Dunst is great, yeah. you know. And he, Benedict Cumberbatch is fine. It's just that I f- feel that he, like I said this before, I, yeah. I feel like the bigger star he's become, the more insecure he has become in yeah. his performances, and it just comes across on screen, and everybody's oh. like, oh, it's amazing. But yeah. I just, I don't know. For me, I kind of see the process too much. Okay. okay. But again, I love him. I love Sherlock. I love things that, you know, this is oh, just yeah, one. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thing. He does great work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just you know, I, I just don't want to come across as like, oh, these guys are crap. No, no, they're not. Crap. They're not. They're... It's just, and I, I've said this before, and I will say it again. <laughs> I blame the director when a good oh, actor yeah. gives a yes. bad performance. Yes, and, totally. You totally. know, because they should know better. Yes. Uh, the last one was West Side Story, uh, directed by Spielberg, didn't see it. Uh, which I didn't see either. And I, I'm not a big fan of musicals, so like, I just, I'm kind of like, eh. I'm, I am not either, but I'm a big fan of Spielberg, yes. and I know he's going to. From what I've heard, he does an amazing job. I, I, uh, Gus Krieger, our, our guest during the Back to the Future episode, uh, listened to his favorite movie of the year, his number one movie of the year. Yeah. Okay. Um, which I don't know. How much he likes musicals, but I well, but I, I I appreciate his opinion. So sure. I'm like, okay, well, well I, yeah. you know, I don't. Yeah, it's. Not, I'm sure it's not a bad movie. It, it, but there's just a lot of stuff going around, a lot yeah. of stuff to watch. Yeah. Um, That's true. That is some other true. stuff that came out recently that I really enjoyed. Uh, Reacher. Yeah, I need to see that still. Uh, big, any big yeah. fan of the books. If any of you are fans of the Lee Child series, yeah, Reacher, they did it right. This is one of the best 
adaptations of a book I have ever nice. seen. And it's funny. I read this article today that is like, there's one thing that they couldn't do in the series. And it's in the books. It's so much of just what's going on in Reacher's mind. Yeah. Like he's yeah. just, he's like, yeah, he's like a yeah. big burly Sherlock Holmes. Sure. Sure. But they found a way to make him explain what's going on. Right, right, economically right. Yeah, without yeah. making him be like well, and him was <laughs> but anyway that's a really good show uh, I really enjoyed the latest Rick and Morty yeah I fell asleep during the season so <laughs> I gotta rewatch like eight episodes or something ah, I, I don't know it's a good show I, I, which is dumb because I love the show yeah. I, I need to rewatch it again I was just shocked when I back to, went back to watch the third episode and I was on episode nine yeah. <laughs> I was like oh that's weird uh, I started watching Pennyworth on, oh, on yeah. HBO Max yeah. the DC Show very good, very adult. Nice, nice. Um, yeah, there's a lot of good stuff. I I feel like I'm running out of things to watch. By the time this airs, I will have finally finished Night Court. <laughs> I'm, I'm up to the seventh season already. Uh, but this, I mean, it's easy when it's a 22 minute episode. Yeah, 20, 22 minute show. Yeah, I just jammed through the latest season. I always forget the name. Uh, the the Daniel Radcliffe and Steve Buscemi. Uh, Miracle Workers. The third season of Miracle Workers, it's on HBO Max. Yeah. Uh, it's a really interesting show because every season is a, is a different genre, basically. Like yeah, the first season yeah. takes place in heaven, and uh, <laughs> Steve Buscemi's God, and then the second season takes place during medieval times, and then this one, it takes place during the Oregon Trail, and they're all like 20 minutes long. Nice. Uh, nice. But it's really fun and really funny. All um, right. I'll they use it. a lot yeah. of like... There's this really great episode where they kind of come across these uh, wagon influencers, <laughs> and this like, and the, the young girl keeps saying hashtag blah 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 hashtag blah blah blah, and they're like, why does she say hashtag? Like, oh, she was kicked in the head by a mule pretty badly. And, <laughs> but it's a fun show. Another thing that's like I think kind of slid under the radar. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I see people talk about it somewhat on social media, but not not a lot. It's a fun one, and. Uh, uh, and I was going to say, there's another one, uh, Abbott Elementary. I don't know if you've seen that. No. It's a sitcom. No, no. I, I think it's on s- ABC, maybe? Peacock? Yeah. yeah. Um, but it's it's like a, it's really good. I think Quinta Brunson made it. She's a yes. young comedian. She's yes. really fun. She's actually yeah. on that yeah. the show we were just talking about. On uh, the one that we just I forgot. I can't remember the name. <laughs> the name. It's like Amnesia. What is the name? Miracle Worker. Miracle Worker. <laughs> She's on that show as an outlaw, as, as, the, as, as a, the daughter oh, of Steve nice. Buscemi, who's nice. the, the, the outlaw. But she, she's amazing in this show. And Tyler James Williams is on this show. This is why I wanted to bring it up. Yep. Tyler James Williams is on this show. And I don't know if you remember him as the as young Chris Rock in Everybody Hates Chris. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And then when he was a little older, I think he was on The Walking Dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. Really yeah. good on that. But he's on the show, and I was watching him on Jimmy Kimmel, and if they ever do a biopic of a young Eddie Murphy, oh, yeah. he would be perfect, nice. perfect to play nice. him. Oh. It looks like him. He's got the vibe. It's, uh, it was, I was just watching it like, ooh, I want to make this movie about Eddie Murphy now. <laughs> but no, it was really good. Plus, he's a really funny, great actor on himself. And it's a really funny, if you like, you know, school yeah, comedies it's yeah. you know it's a, it's streaming on hulu, hulu and peacock okay, okay. i think but it's you know it's one of those kind of modern family or yeah. office type of shows where they kind of talk to the camera right, right okay okay uh i just uh, started watching the new season of the amazing race which mm. i'm super excited about didn't even realize apparently six episodes have been aired already <laughs> didn't even realize until this last weekend that's crazy uh it was the ep- it was the season where they got through three legs and then they had to stop because of the pandemic oh march of 2020 they had really? to stop and then they picked it back up so i'm really curious to see how they handle that is everybody real chubby um i don't know <laughs> I, I just watched the first episode so it's it's weird but they had the host come on and phil keegan came on and he was like here's what's happening like Ooh. we shot this stuff beforehand and it's these three episodes are going to be it is what it is and then and i cool. so i'm really curious to see by the time we get to the fourth if they're like racing with masks on yeah. and stuff like that which i'm assuming they would be i yeah i but i i've seen bits of that show while yeah. you were watching and i haven't really yeah. gotten into it but it's it seems like a really cool show unfortunately <laughs> the only uh, Reality show that I've watched recently, and thank God we've yeah. stopped, was you oh, wrote God. me into Big Brother. Every... No, we watched one episode of the last season, it's which so there's some Liberty Big Brother happening right now or something, or yeah. it's going to be happening soon. No, it is, know. and I think Chris Kattan. But they did in the summer of 2020, they tried, or summer of 2021, they tried to Maybe, do yeah. a Big Brother thing, and it was so dumb. And like we literally watched one episode, and I was like, I can't, I just can't. I'm so proud of us for getting <laughs> for away from cutting that. Cutting that cord. Yes. <laughs> 
It was one of the most embarrassing yeah. little secrets, you know. It was well. The the reason the only reason the the, the Amazing Race thing is because uh, Phoebe well, and I good started show. watching it. Literally watched the first episode of the first season like the day after the pandemic started, and we watched three hundred and thirty one episodes. Good lord! Over the course of the first year of the pandemic. Good lord! But they, I mean, that show they do stuff. They it's travel. A, they have to. To me, it's yeah. a, it's not a reality show. It's a game show. Yeah. It just happens to take place around the world. Yes, and it's and it's, it's, it's super a, fun. Yeah, it's more interesting than a bunch of attention whores laying around a house trying to F each other and F each other over. <laughs> Got enough of that from Jim during the pandemic. Yeah, I was trying to <laughs> F you and F you over every day. No, <laughs> uh, it was, yeah. I think that was the moment. It was like, I don't need to watch people sitting around a house because I'm literally sitting around a house right now. Well, and uh, it was much more entertaining here. Yeah. Especially is, with the kitten. Totally true. We had a little kitten totally to true. give us some She's some entertainment. So she is ginormous. So we'll put a, a couple of picks up. Such Ripley a is big cat. she. She went from we'll, we'll do it before and after. We'll yeah. put put one out because she was just a little tiny rat mess. She could literally fit into a teacup. Yeah, she could literally fit in her mouth right and now. How big she is now! <laughs> literally, her head is bigger than her body was. Yeah, this nasty little scraggly tail and flea ridden uh, and eyes all yeah. roomy and picked and, off plenty of feet. Oh, she was a mess, and now she's just a. a she, this is why we'd be stepdads. She's the most spoiled little <laughs> animal that ever. I want to come back as as our cat, man. Yeah, we've had a couple, and they've uh, they've had some great lives. <laughs> um, what are you playing? What games are you playing? Uh, I'm still finishing Valhalla. Nice. I I decided I needed to uh, um, try to get through that. It's so long. Is it's that so long? There's that whole new expansion coming out next month. <sighs> Like a whole nother I didn't, 40 I didn't, hours. I didn't pay for the season pass or whatever, so I'd have to pay for the Everybody DLC. does. That's oh, not part oh, of that. Oh, I thought it was. No, oh, no. Okay. They do like year one season passes now. And then they, it's just I, the microtransactions yeah. have become a little crazy, especially Ubisoft, man. They've got. I don't know. I, they I, got I, a lot of. We'll see. I Generally, if, if I finish the game before it comes out, then I won't bother because I, I did this with. Uh, Horizon Zero Dawn or yeah. whatever it was. I didn't realize there was DLC until the very end, and I could finish the story already. And then it literally made you go back to before the last mission yep. and then do the DLC. And I was like, well, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun DLC. Uh, the, the, the Assassin's Creed thing is all. It's it's a whole, a whole completely different. Set, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. there's some cool stuff where you can turn into a bird and do bird we'll assassination. See. I didn't see that. Just that sounds like it's just adding more layers to it. That I'm like, I already have so many other. Yeah. It's a whole different realm. So yeah. I don't think and you're playing as a different character. I think oh, you're playing okay. as Odin, looking oh, for his oh, son okay. Okay. in the Nether realms. Oh, well, that could be interesting. So there'll be monsters and stuff. Yeah. It looks really fun. I'll wait for the reviews. I've been playing. Uh, I started Disco Elysium, yeah. the director's yeah. cut. Uh, which is one of the most amazing games I've ever played. It's if you like D and D or tabletop adventures, yeah. dice games. This is the closest thing I've ever played. That's awesome. to an actual thing, and it's just so deep. Like yeah. every conversation, you know, there's roles yeah. to make it deeper yeah. and stuff. I've been playing that, and I started uh, Metro Exodus on the PS5. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. an older game, much like, older, like 2015, I think. Yeah, I didn't pick it up for like five bucks. Yeah, it's I, think I picked cheap. it up for like it's five cheap. bucks, but it's gorgeous and it's good it's yeah, yeah it's a really fun story um they just released the uh cyberpunk 2077 ps5 yes. xbox series s and whatever the hell the other one's called yeah um, they just released that today uh if today is we're recording it. uh yeah sorry <laughs> the, the, the tuesday two weeks ago they released it uh but it's it's uh it's free if you own the game already. Mm-hmm. It's free for the upgrade, so get that. But if you don't, the game's only twenty five dollars, yeah. and that is a hell of a deal because yeah. it is a like two hundred hour game. I'm really excited and to actually. Yeah. I put a little time in before. Yeah, what, I had it on the regular. I I had a PS4. I had like a launch day yeah, PS4. Yeah. I didn't have a pro right, or anything, right, so I had the old yeah. school. Which I'm really that lasted, man. It still yeah. is in our living room. It lasts. Yeah, it's still. You know, it's still going mine strong. Still works. And, uh, yeah. But the PS3 I had died immediately when I got the PS4. <laughs> so like PS4. it was like it was rigged to kill <laughs> it knew, itself. It knew. It was like ah, I'm gonna... you don't love me anymore. Exactly. And then it committed suicide. I'm really excited to play the PS5 version. Yeah, yeah. They had a huge update to it, uh, the 1.5 update, which fixes most of the issues. We'll see. Apparently, yeah. I, apparently, granted, haven't played it yet, yeah. but but. I I didn't I started playing it and was like eh like I'm gonna wait because I knew it had issues yeah. and you know I didn't freak out about it like other people I no, was just like whatever I, I'll they, wait CD Projekt Red the company that made it is 
they made one of my absolute favorite games of all time, The Witcher 3. Which that upgrade I'm super looking uh, for. That's the one I'm looking for the most. Yeah. They're doing a PS5 upgrade for that. I can't wait to play that again. But they're, they, they do really great DLC. And, and it was very uh, surprising and disheartening that the game came out the way that it did. And it was mostly they didn't optimize it for the older machines, like the ones that we had. Oh, yeah. They, you know, yeah, they worked yeah. pretty well on Pro, and they yep. worked pretty well on PS5. But nobody had a PS5 at then. that time. Yeah, it was you know, like six people had it, and uh, but it was super disappointing, and it was bugged to the point where the PlayStation yeah. Store took it off of its store, which yeah. it. You in know, fact, it it, it, investors in the game sued CD Projekt Red because of yeah, of, it was a big like, deal. Yeah, misinformation or whatever, essentially being led astray that it, the game was ready to go. And so, yeah, this the game's been out for a year this yeah. week, and they've been doing patches was, yeah. steadily and. They have a long way to go to win back the fans. I yeah, I trust them. I mean, but they, I, yeah, exactly. I, I feel mean, like they handled it well. I'm an They're adult. Like, they admitted yeah. that they were like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. okay, we rushed Things it. Happen. And, yeah, it's like don't you can't get mad at. Some, I mean, I don't know. I, it, it just frustrates me when fans get to the point of like, you owe me this. Well, and it's like, I will say that I am not a fan of releasing buggy games, and I think same, that's becoming same. more and more. I was just. Disheartened that such a, a gold star company yeah. would tarnish its perfect reputation. Pressure. I mean, it was all pressure, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, the, the game had been delayed many times. Yeah. They were trying. I think I think they were starting Very ambitious, to make yeah. the game when it was for the, the PS4 mm-hmm. Series Pro. And then they realized they could do it for the PS5. And they were trying to, to upgrade and make it better. And then it just was that weird time where it was trying to do both worlds yeah. and it just wouldn't work. And when you're doing something really ambitious, yeah. There's a lot of moving parts yeah. and you know, a lot of things are going to go wrong. I mean, the more uh complex these games get, yeah. the the yeah. more that could go wrong. But I mean, like No Man's Sky is a perfect example of that. When mm-hmm. it came out, people were like, this is so dumb. Yeah. Like you just fly around and do nothing. <laughs> yes. And and which it, was, it, it did not deliver true. on any of the promises no. that it made. But now it's been, what, a year and a half, two years? And the game is incredible now. Oh, yeah. That, like, the, it is super fun. I would – Hello Games, I think, is yeah. who made it. I think their post-launch dedication to that game is probably the best I've ever seen yeah. Yeah. of any uh, developer. It's – the game has – they've added so much, so much to the point where I try to go on – and I just feel like it's overwhelming now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's like, much, oh, how do I get the mix? How do I make the this? And right, I'm not right. a big – I like bases and all that stuff, but I don't have the patience to kind of craft all that the stuff. And things I like tried that, that yeah. Planet Coaster. We got that for free. Yeah. And I ended up, like, messing up on the – on uh, my, <laughs> the very my stupid thing. pathway was, like, crooked, and I couldn't uncrooked the thing, and I just got so frustrated <laughs> – I just wanted to make a pathway, man. You just wanted to make some roller Yoink, coasters. Joel Zoinks. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, all right, let's let's chat some about uh, Eddie, Eddie Murphy's Murphy. stand up. Like he, you saw his pieces of my mind tour. I did, which was the late eighties. Yes, right? yeah. yeah, I would like this eighty seven. I would like think his third major like tour. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah, after um, the Delirious tour and, and Raw, Raw. Mm-hmm. yeah, Raw was the first stand-up I saw him in, and I was definitely too young to be watching it. <laughs> yes. But but my brother loved it, and and uh, still loves it to this day. But like it, it was it was my introduction to him because I, I don't remember him from SNL at all. Oh yeah, well, I um, remember him from like you know his first appearance on SNL. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, yeah, know, he was such a that. he was a huge part of my. Development, yeah, yeah, as a as an artist, sure, sure, totally. He I mean, and yeah. you know, it's like I don't know. I mean, he was just so funny and so it was just the confidence too that he yeah, had. Yeah. That he was just he didn't give an f, man. No, he and knew what he was doing, and that was it. <laughs> he's not a self deprecating comedian. He's not a boastful like I'm the best guy in the world. No, he carries himself. I'm the best guy in the world. But he doesn't. It's very rare that kind of personality. It's like a yeah. yeah. He. I don't have to tell you. It's it's like Chris Rock, man. Chris Rock is like a tiger pacing the stage. Yeah, you yeah. know, it's like there's this this energy that certain comedians give off that you just cannot stop watching them. Dave Chappelle, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, Robin Williams. Yeah. Uh, there's just guys that. Uh, that are unicorns, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And he yeah. was one of those too. That was one of those. Uh, Greg Proops for me was one of those people, but it might also have been that I 
just most of the other comedians were just not good. <laughs> I did a show with Craig. Proust. He was he's just very professional. Like it's he's funny. He I used to be in this comedy group called Los Chupacabras. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. Chups. The Chups. And this was back when nobody gave a crap about sketch or improv comedy. Great. There was like the Groundlings and LA, you know, they, it wasn't the days where you throw a rock and you'd hit 65 improv groups in Los Angeles. Yeah. But we would play around town and we were, do- <laughs> we were doing this gig in a bar and it was us and Greg Proops and improv. Not really a good bar <laughs> entertainment. No, um, no. <laughs> it takes a certain amount of people. Paying t- anyway, so he goes up. He's hilarious. And then we go up for our first set because we had to do like two sets, right? And now uh, we go up for our first one and nobody could give less of a crap. It was just <laughs> like pins dropping or trying. So it was just flop sweat, right? Uh. So we go outside after the, the, the thing and, and we're just miserable. We're like, should we leave? We're like, no, we got to finish the show, even yeah. though it was bad. And, uh, and <laughs> we go in and we're sitting at the bar and Craig's like, that was rough, but he's like, that was rough, but you guys are really good. This is just not the play. He was so encouraging. Oh, that's and so nice. nice. And he's like, get yeah. up there, do it again. Just do it for yourselves. Yeah. Let me buy you guys a beer. He was so, so Aww. nice. And just yeah. like, it was just joy to be, he could have been such a and deservedly such a right, jerk. Right, you guys you know? were terrible. Exactly, what he could are you have just rubbed us in the yeah. ground. But he was so nice that to the point where our second set wasn't great, yeah. but it was better. Yeah, well, good. <laughs> That's good. That's good. But I'll, I'll never forget him for being such a cool dude. <laughs> yeah, I used to uh, go to see a lot of stand ups at uh, Comedy Death Ray at UCB here in Hollywood uh, Tuesday nights. Uh, I would go there with a friend of mine. We would go every Tuesday, and I saw a lot of people when they were super young, yeah. like Aziz Ansari, mm-hmm. and, and uh, got to see Louis C.K. a couple times. Nice. Uh, which he, it's funny because normally you'd go up and these guys would get like ten minutes or less. Yeah. And Louis C.K. literally went on for almost ninety. <laughs> like no one <laughs> wanted to stop him. It was just like, all right, keep going, keep going. <clears throat> but uh, he was great. He was really funny. I mean, but it's one of those things that's part of the reason you went to this because you never knew who was going to show up. Sure, and, sure. And, of course, for a while it was it was pretty unknown, you know, underground, but then it blew up, and, and then it was like to get in, you had to line up like four hours beforehand, and I was like, okay, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm done with this. It was like uh, Mar-Lago. Yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Is that it? Mar-Lago? It, Mar- no, it's Mar-Lago. the Largo. <laughs> Mar-a-Lago Mar-a-Lago is, is, is a different improv uh, yeah. <laughs> location. That's not a very funny. The improv things. eating documents. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> apparently, he's a DJ now. He DJ'd at DJ at Mar-a-Lago. Oh. oh. DJ Donny J. No. Um, uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Largo. The Largo was great. I, I've only been there a couple times, but uh, but it was that was definitely kind of the heyday, kind of a second renaissance of of the comedians at yeah. least here in L.A. Well, there was a the, the comedians burnt stand up comedy basically burned itself yeah, out yeah. in the eighties and the nineties because it just became a juggernaut. There were yeah. so many comedy. You couldn't again. It was just a bunch of dudes in wearing blazers and t-shirts <laughs> with the sleeves rolled up in front of brick walls, being like, "Hey, did you ever notice that well, airplane food? I mean, well, it's the deal with airplanes." <laughs> yes. it, to the point where Saturday Night Live before uh, Seinfeld, before Jerry Seinfeld yeah. hit it big, uh, they did a sketch with Tom Hanks, oh, where really? they were all basically, "What's the deal with me?" <laughs> and they were doing this sketch. Yeah. They were just basically doing his Making bit fun of him. because everybody was kind of doing that observational, yeah. you know, it was right, like the right. same thing with uh, the, 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 the guy from Mad About You. Paul Reiser. Paul Reiser, yeah. Uh, He's the same guy. Hey, you ever notice that I'm a jerk? Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm about to prove it to you. Hey. But when, but like at the beginning of it yeah. where I kind of got, I, I, I was lucky enough to... Like I said, I found my old man's records. Mm-hmm. I found Bill mm-hmm. Cosby, and I found Dick Gregory, and I found Red Fox, and I found uh, Pryor. You found Richard, Richard Pryor, Pryor yeah. yeah, and uh, I found Jonathan Winters, which to this day is why I got into improvisation. Oh, really? Of, oh, I've never seen a funnier, more brilliant, brilliant man. Dude, pause the the podcast right now and go watch clips of Jonathan yeah. Winters and his heyday on YouTube. It he, is incredible. Yeah, he was Robin Williams' hero to the point where he got him on Mark and Mindy playing his son, Mirth. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> but if you watch the two of them, oh, yeah. Ron Williams basically is Jonathan Winters 2.0. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. both insane, and they're both <laughs> insanely funny. But I got into that, and then my sister gave me a, one of those – I talked about this before. Gave me one of those uh, shoebox cassette players, you know, yeah, with the little microphone. Oh yeah, and a, and some tapes. And one of the tapes was Steve Martin, Wild and Crazy Guy, which I was too. Oh young, yeah, way too young. So to fa- listen to. fantastic. But I wore that tape out, man. Yeah. I loved it so much. And and Eddie Murphy's tape with Boogie in the Butt, 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 <laughs> Boogie in the Butt. Uh, I wore. I mean, I just couldn't get enough of stand up comedy. I just yeah. loved it. Yeah, and. In high school, <laughs> in high school, uh, we had a talent show, and I did stand up for the talent show, and I won. Nice. Uh, I bet that didn't go to your head at all, Jim. No, of course not. Of course not. So <laughs> the weirdo that would direct the plays uh, at school, the student weirdo, uh, uh, was uh. like, "You should do this. You know, you should take this to." Uh, to the comedy clubs, you should do your your. Wow, act. he encouraged like, you. I was like, yeah, yeah, I should, and uh, and he's like, but you gotta like, find some other stuff. So I like, I I found this uh, Weekly World News, and I was gonna do all these bits from that, and then I had my my uh, orthodontist bit because my my orthodontist was named M- Doctor Manson, so I had this whole Charles. Oh, Manson, nice, you know, nice. This is really nice. good. Had my Rambo bit. Been doing that. <laughs> That's why it's such a great. Uh, that's why I do such a great impersonation because I've been 14. Since I was 15, yeah. Yeah. But uh, so I get up there. I get there. They, uh, the first time I did it, I, I go to the, the comedy store in San Diego. Mm-hmm. And my mom and my sister come with me. I couldn't drive, so I, right. they drove you were me. Young. Yeah. Um, and they wouldn't let me in the club. So I had to wait outside. And so, like, comedian, and I'm putting these in quotes. Yeah. Because it's open mic night. Right, right, right. Comedian after comedian comes out after just bombing horribly and they're all like what's your deal and i'm like oh i'm a high school student and i won the talent show and i'm really here to do my material and i watch one guy go in with the exact same weekly world news and so oh, i'm like no. i don't know to throw that away so i keep pushing me back and pushing me back <laughs> finally like around 1 a.m oh jeez, i get to go on and the only people in the audience are my mom and my sister <laughs> and all of the comedians that bombed horribly oh. and so i start my act and they Start heckling me oh, right out of no. the gate, and I I didn't know how to deal with hecklers, so I'd be like, "Excuse me, I'm sorry. What did you say?" And they'd be like, <laughs> "You suck. Go back to high school, you moron." Or you know, it's like ah. So finally, like one guy laughed at my Rambo joke, and I was like, "Thank you." And they're flashing the light to get me off. Yeah, my yeah. mom, my sister, just buried there. Oh, we don't know him. Um, <laughs> ducking out the back. <laughs> you know, I take the bus home. This kid, he sucks. They were, they were very sweet about it. They were very nice. Very supportive, but uh, it was horrifying, horrifying. I have, it was basically what show business is. Like, yeah, like my yeah, first yeah. exposure to that <laughs> is basically what it's been, you know. <laughs> Don't worry, kid, it just gets worse <laughs> yeah, from here. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. But yeah, that was, I did it a few more times, and then um, I did it again in college. Yeah. I did, they had the, the National Stand-Up College Comic Competition. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, I think uh, it was either Seinfeld or I, maybe it was uh, Jay Leno. that would They'd send all the tapes of the winners from all the colleges, oh, and then yeah. they would pick the winner, and then you got some money or something. Or, or, or you get your own special. I don't know what it was. It was yeah, some sort of, yeah. you know, some sort of big thing. Help your career in yeah, some way. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this friend of mine grabs the flyer, and he's like, I think I'm going to do it. I'm like, you're gonna do it, and he's not really. I'm like, you're not funny. So I'm like, well, if you're gonna do it, I'll do it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I already won the talent show. So, yeah, I won. I won, I won my t- high school talent did, show. Did you win the talent there was, show? There was almost no. 50 kids in my class. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I beat out a kid singing uh, "The Cure" oh, on his. Oh wow, that must keyboard. have been tough. Uh. Anyway, uh, so. <laughs> I, I kind of had material, but I kind of was going to, like, wing it. But I had some things. And one of the things was, like, this bit about being an asshole. And so when I get there, the people are like, okay, you can't curse. You can't say anything bad. I was like, well, my whole, one of my things is about being an asshole. And they're like, well, <laughs> just say jerk. I'm like, well, jerk's not funny. And they're like, well, well, you could say ass. I'm like, okay, well, I, if I could say – and it was just, like, yeah, the stupid yeah. thing, right? How is that, how is that better so or I was different? Like, fine, fine. And – uh so I ended up winning. Nice. 
But the reason why, it wasn't because I was any uh, particularly funny. I mean, I was fine, you know. But everybody else, dude, there was one guy who would come up and say, and Eddie Murphy says this, and he would do an Eddie Murphy joke. And, he would, and then Richard Pryor does this. And then, and, and, but he wouldn't do an impersonation. <laughs> he would just do it in his monotone. Uh, ha, ha, he, he, this, okay. Hey, and it would be like, it was a white guy too. So it was really uh, racist. A lot, you know, it's like, I can't believe those guys got up there and just did that horrible stuff in front of so many people. I mean, it takes guts to go out and be so crappy. Right. I give right. them all props, man. Because, well, you know. And then what about their friends? Somebody had to be like, yeah, that's good, dude. Yeah, you, without any of, sort of comedy or irony, <laughs> just spouting off other people's stuff is awesome. You should do that. A lot of stand-up comedians have made a career off that. Look at Carl Smencia. <laughs> Look at Dane Cook. Yes. They, they have a tendency just to do other people's material. Well, at, least, at least they have the decency to put it in their own voice. <laughs> oh. But yeah, that was pretty much my... My stand-up. I've done it a couple yeah. of times since then. I did a lot of storytelling stuff, which is kind of like stand-up. I'd like that much yeah, better. Yeah, That to me is, if I was a stand-up, that's what I would be doing. I'd be doing like, my absolute favorite stand-up is Paul of Tompkins. And, and he is hilarious. Also one of the best improvisers this is, in the It's business. because literally two years, every Tuesday, I went to Comedy Death Ray, and he was there probably 90% of the time, yeah. and he did different material every single time. So good. If you listen to podcasts, listen to the Comedy Bang Bang podcast. Yeah. Uh, he's on that a lot. That podcast, if you like improv, that podcast is really funny because it's just basically I, guests coming on, and he comes on and improvises characters, and they interview. And he is so funny, and it was. I was always, I'm always so, so disappointed that he didn't have a bigger stand up career. Like, he, he was did, also on that Miracle he Worker did really show. Well. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, he did. He he's done well, but like, man, he's just the same. He does different material. I I would see. These same guys doing literally the same oh, yeah. three jokes because you can every time. you can get away with I, if you have a solid five minutes back then, <sighs> you could just go from club to club and just you could work that five. Uh, like uh, Brian Posehn, love Brian Posehn, but man, yeah, same two jokes every time. Yeah, every time. Paul F. Tompkins is the guy too that shows up on every single show. Yeah, and on tons of movies because people are just like like uh, like uh, Mansukis. What's that kid? Uh, Jason Mantzoukas. He's like our mighty. kid. He's, he's, Jason Mantzoukas yeah. is another guy that shows up everywhere, and he's such a brilliant improviser that he he always gets to – his thing is, I won't do a script. I'll come in, right, but right. you got to let me do my thing. Right, right. And they're like, okay. All right. Uh, he plays make it Tommy's good. penis – Oh, in the is it, is it Jason Mantzoukas? Oh, I didn't know yeah. that. I didn't know I need that. to watch that. I, I, I also didn't know that that show, uh, I don't know if all of it, but it was directed by Lake Bell. Oh, yeah. The actor? Like, I was surprised. Yeah. I was like, oh. Directed by her, produced by uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah, who I plays had the no idea. construction yeah, worker. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the videotape the, guy. Steals the, guy the who, tape. That finds it, yeah. I, I had, it's, it's a show I need to watch. I, it's on my list. But um, Yeah, it kind of flew under the radar. I wasn't, until I kind of saw him talking about it, I was like, eh, I don't know. I, I mean, you, you're going for a very specific audience when you have a talking penis. Yes, but, <laughs> I mean, but that just... that comes from Tommy's book, right? Where he no, ended up, he was I so know. effed yeah. up, yeah. That Tommy Lee had a, a discussion with his penis <laughs> about how it's just going to be him and Pam and the penis from now on, <laughs> <laughs> and there's not going to be any other ladies. So there's like, it, so it's based he, on his actual he's apologizing experience. To his penis, I'm or sorry, just maybe just sorry. explaining it. Yeah, you know. Hey, bro. This is what we need. Look, to do. this is rad, man. <laughs> hey, look, she shreds. She shreds. So, you know, what we're going to do is we're just going to be oh, her. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, she's she rad, dude. Shreds. Oh, I love her, babe. Oh, babe. Oh, no. Tommy Lee is way too spot on. <laughs> <laughs> that was creepy. I remember when that came out, man. Yeah. It was so shocking. Pretty sure that was the first celebrity sex tape I saw. I, well, probably because it was pretty much the first celebrity sex yeah, tape that was yeah. released. I mean, I'm sure there's. I feel like there was something right before the. Anyway, uh, Sylvester Stallone had that porn. That oh, he that's did. right, the he Italian did, Stallion. He did the, but he yeah. that was not that wasn't like a no a sex a, tape a leaked sex tape. And then there was uh, <laughs> some of the first stuff. Strangely enough, was Bob Bob Crane from uh, Hogan's Hero. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. was really into ever he, yeah. There's autofocus. A, autofocus autofocus is a, really is a movie yeah. about Bob Crane's with, uh, sex addiction. With yeah, Paul Schrader directed that with Greg Kinnear. Greg Kinnear playing and Willem Dafoe. Bob Crane. Yeah, Bob, Bob Crane. Crane. Is that yeah, is that Bob Crane. Yeah, Bob Crane. Okay. I loved Bob Crane as a kid. Loved Hogan Heroes. He Hogan was Heroes. Into some, Hogan's Heroes. He was into some weird stuff. Yeah, but uh, his buddy kind of 
egg that addiction on. And, and it's a really interesting movie. It's beat him to it. death with a tripod. Oh my god! Yeah, watch that movie. <laughs> it's a good movie. It's a good movie. I, I'm not a huge fan of biopics, but it does, they do a really good job in that. But it, it's I like the kind of that kind of biopic, which is more like taking a, I like taking a chunk of somebody's life. Yeah, I think the ones where they try to do. You know, soup to nuts, birth to death. Where it's literally just a bullet point of everything that happens. It's yeah. like, no, I, that's that's my issue with most biopics. Like, Good Night, Good Luck is one of my favorite yeah. biopics. It was just a tiny chunk of Edward R. Murrow's life. Yeah. But the most important chunk. Well, and it's, but it, it, it's indicative of the rest of his life. You don't need to know where he came from because it's in the acting. It's in the writing. You know, right. you don't need to explain what happened to him because it's there. Yeah. Like, uh, I, yeah. Like, walk the line when we... We see the brother die. Yeah, yeah. It's just they, they that forever. I gotta explain why he's doing this, and it's like, no, you just. Oh, you know. I'm anyway, sad about I'm, stuff. I'm That's very why I'm drinking and doing my drugs. <laughs> I'm just very, very picky about biopics. I'll tell you this: I'm tired of learning about the personal lives of people <laughs> that I watch. We talked about this before. I don't. Mm-hmm. I didn't know anything really personally about any of the stars in the '70s and '80s. Yeah. Yeah. You know, occasionally yeah. it'd be like Johnny Carson, drunk driving the rest. But it would, you know, it would. Just, well, yeah. We didn't know. They got divorced and whatever. That's about the, the size of it. What I really like about discovering these new talents like Quinta Brunson, mm-hmm. you know, of I know nothing about her. Yeah. yeah nothing. Exactly. And I'm not going to. Yeah. I'm not going to learn about her. I'm not going to learn about Janelle James or Tyler James Williams. Not that I don't respect them as people. Sure. But I, I, I just. It just gets so disappointing. Yeah, yeah. The more you learn about somebody yeah. a lot of the times, not all the times, it just it takes you away from what they're doing. And I just want to see them. I 100% agree. As their characters and not be like, well, she's effing this guy. And nope, he I, uh, beat the crap out of his kids. And You can't judge somebody by one instance of no, their life. No, If they continue to do that. And they're, you know, if Rob Lowe well, right, in right. his 50s is still, still making tapes with to, six, 17 uh, year old six girls, yeah. okay, put him in this jail. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. But if a 20, you know, a 19, 20, 21 year old guy yeah. is with these girls, just 17 or 18, you know, it's not, I'm not saying it's right, but it's not like, you know, right, right. It's effing Rob Lowe, man. The guy's the prettiest human being on the planet. <laughs> Anybody, you know, it's like yeah, he melts yeah, into his yeah, body. Yeah. He's so magical. Well, didn't Eddie Murphy had like in the mid nineties? Didn't he have some big scandal thing? He had this thing where he picked up a transvestite prostitute. Okay, okay. But he said it was just to like give them a ride, give or her something? a ride home yeah. or something. It was like give him a ride down. Yeah, the and I think even the prostitute was like, yeah, he just gave me a ride home. Okay, but then it's just like this whole like. You know, thing about Eddie Murphy like in transvestite women's feet and all this really yeah, crazy stuff. Yeah, I remember all that kind of going. It was around the time when he started doing a lot of family movies. And... But so what? If he likes yeah. transvestite women or if yeah. he likes feet, you know, as long if as nobody's getting hurt. If it's consensual, then who exactly. Cares? You know, you I know don't I mean? like the fact that I know about Quentin Tarantino's foot fetish so much. Well, I mean, he jams pretty, in every one of his movies. Pretty obvious, yeah. I don't care about that you know as long as no. all the feet are consent you know it's as long as they're the cool with it that he's yeah. worshiping people are weird america is filled with every sort of weird sexual picadillo or sexual yeah. dysfunction you could think of because of our puritan uh, sourcing origins. Mm-hmm. yeah and the fact that we can we can blow as many people away as we want <laughs> but you try to blow somebody yeah. and then the whole world shuts down i mean it's like yeah we don't need to talk about no, the disparity no. between uh, sex and violence. But uh, let's get back to comedy. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was lucky enough to see a lot of really good stand ups back in the day. I got to see uh, Penn and Teller, Bobcat Goldthwait. I got to see Jerry Seinfeld in a small club. I, I saw all these people too, but it was on my television. Right, right, right. <laughs> I even saw Richard. Pr- I think when I saw Richard Pryor, it was when I went to The Tonight Show. Oh, nice. And it nice. wasn't Johnny that was hosting, it was uh, Gary Shandling was guest hosting. At the time, I was very disappointed. Because you wanted to see, uh... because I wanted to see Johnny, right? But uh, but in retrospect, I'm really glad because he was very funny and I really liked him. And oh, Gary Shandling was great. Cool. Yeah. We had really great seats, and Pryor was one of the stand-ups, and it was really fun to see. Um, That'd be cool. I've I've never seen any late night shows like tapings of late night shows. I've well, been to that that's one. not entirely true. I did see a couple tapings of Real Time with Bill Maher. Oh, nice. But not 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 like being able to see a stand up from two feet away. Yeah, you know I, mean? like, I, I I saw Leno too, and my girlfriend at the time had an in. 
Oh, so we yeah. got to go backstage oh, and meet nice. him, and he nice. gave us a little tour. He was super nice. I've heard he's, he's incredibly nice. I see him driving around the valley quite yeah. a bit in his 100-year-old cars. I don't particularly dig his brand of comedy, but he just seems like a good dude. I was lucky enough to see a lot of stand-up. I loved it. But uh, you know, I thought of, I've thought about going back to it a bunch of times. I went into sketch and improv instead because I like working with other people. Yeah. I just, yeah. I'm a collaborator. I like working with other people. I also yeah. don't unfortunately have the discipline to be a solo guy like it's yeah. hard for me to do stuff for me or on my own right right uh i just work better in groups yeah i i consider doing stand-up stuff but i do not like rejection so i'm just not going to do that uh and it just seems it seems so difficult i have like, a ton of stuff i've written a bunch of stuff yeah that i have in notes and and, and i i still kind of want to do do it. Yeah. But I only want to do it if I can find a unique way to do it and a yeah. unique way to myself. Yeah. I don't want to just go up there and be like, <laughs> y'all have cats? <laughs> you know, <laughs> Isn't it crazy when your cat for one minute, you're petting it, and then all of a sudden it bites you? It's like, hey, what's up with you, buddy? <laughs> anyway, airplane food. You know, it's like I want to find something that's yeah. interesting. An interesting angle. Yeah, yeah, that's a me angle. Right. You right. know, that isn't just miserable you know i mean yeah, just spouting yeah. about how miserable everything is it's it's very it's tough and i think the best ones make it look so easy oh yeah and it just yeah. looks and that the deceptive thing about stand-up because there's very few guys that could just go up there and riff mm -hmm. for an hour mm -hmm. like rob williams he could do uh, it jeff garland does that a lot yeah and but even robin williams man it gets tiresome yeah, you know, it's well, like he's yeah, it's it, he wears you down. Yeah, it's just like, dude, <laughs> just like, please gosh, take please, a breath, you, man. Can you take it down to one hundred percent rather yeah, than one hundred? Just a finish a joke, <laughs> finish one before you start the next one. But uh, but most of the guys, that act has been honed for a year, yeah, too, yeah, and yeah. every word is picked and chosen very yeah. specifically. So it sounds like they're just like, hey, I'm just talking to you right now, and I'm just coming off the top of my head. Yeah. is all this stuff, but it's yeah. you know. Jerry Seinfeld is so rehearsed. You know, he, oh, yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a perfectionist, you know. Yeah. He's got to do it exactly right. Well, Where, I feel like know. Murphy's the same way. Like, he, mm -hmm. you know, oh, like yeah. he knows. And it's it's every breath, every moment is planned out. Oh, yeah. Know? I mean, it's because he knows when it's going to hit harder than not. And of course, it, That's yeah. got to be tough and amazing at the same time because you're playing in front of so many people. And you got to know when to hold the laughs and yeah. where the rhythm is and everything. Like, like Kevin Hart, I haven't seen a lot of his stand-up. I mean, I think Kevin's a funny guy. Mm -hmm. I think he, you know, I enjoy his movies. He's, there's some movies where he's just, blah, 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 you know, it's just relentless. Yeah, yeah, and, and I yeah. And I get exhausted. Yeah. But there's other movies where he's really good. I think he's a very talented guy. But he does stand-up at these stadiums, man, in front of yeah. like yeah. 50,000 people. It's crazy, yeah. That, to me, is insane. You and a microphone commanding a room of 50,000 people yeah, is crazy. just got to be the most ego inflate. I mean, Terrifying. you know what I mean? To be able yeah. to be a regular human being with that amount of, you know, and the come down from something like that. Yeah. You know, this is why so many guys do drugs start, and stuff or whatever, drinking. because yeah. the, you know, the high from being so loved. Right, right. You know, that endorphin rush just sends you to a crash because... You know, yeah. your brain has to yeah. re remake some serotonin. Serotonin, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I totally respect those guys that can, can just uh, yeah. take on arenas, you know? It's crazy. I, I, I have a hard time performing in front of 100 people. I can imagine <laughs> 50,000. You know, everybody is just influenced by whomever. This is just how it is now, you know? Artists, yeah, you, yeah. you know, it's not. it doesn't matter if you're gay, it doesn't matter if you're straight, it doesn't matter whatever. Everybody is just kind of accepting of... Everyone, yeah, and yeah. which is amazing. I mean, most people, they're still <laughs> always going to be a contingent of jerks. <sighs> but back yeah. then, it was interesting being so into a different culture. And, you know, maybe we were co opting it or maybe we were whatever, but it wasn't that to us. What yeah. it was was we discovered something that spoke to us. Yeah. In a really weird, you know, you know, and it wasn't, you know, about trying to be black or trying to whatever black culture. Right. I just thought Eddie Murphy was the coolest mother effer in the world. Yeah. I thought Prince was the coolest guy, mm -hmm. you know, in the world, and his music was the most amazing thing I ever heard. It was so dirty. Yeah. I remember yeah, buying the tape, jack you off, off, and being like, Wee! you know, we'd be listening <laughs> to the things. Ooh, you know, uh, Michael Jackson, 
oh my god, man. Yeah. Yeah. That guy was just a juggernaut. Amazing. Yeah. You know, it was this renaissance of really great African American artists coming up at that time. And those were the guys that spoke to us. You had these these fearless performers mm-hmm. like Eddie Murphy and like Prince that were never gonna back down and and and, and acquiesce right. to the man, right. if you will. <laughs> sure, that were sure. just, you know, and not only that, but they backed it up with this incredible talent right right there's never going to be another eddie murphy there will never be another prince no no you know there'll there'll be guys that are they're funny in different ways or whatever but these two guys are unicorns Mm -hmm. and and for me those two guys are probably like my faves all the way through the 80s like yeah yeah the when i saw prince in concert it was probably the best show i've ever seen it's i I saw uh uh, tom waits too oh oh, yeah for very different reasons he was Probably, you know, it's a yeah. big tie between the two of them. Very sure. different shows. Sure, sure, sure. But, uh, but yeah, I just I credit Eddie Murphy with, and this I look, I, this sounds going to sound hyperbolic, but I think he really did a lot to change the way people saw race and people saw young black men. Yeah, yeah, you know, I would agree. By I the, would agree. I mean, he fought. It wasn't. He, he didn't have to fight that fight because in his mind he already won. Exactly. And, and that was it. And he was like, well, you're going to like my stuff because I'm good. And, and I don't give a F if yeah. you don't. Yeah. I'll it's walk like, the hell away. Fine. Yeah. Fine. Because I know people will like my stuff. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, so long. Yeah. The, the amount of confidence. It's just that confidence. Yeah. I, I hope it's real because it's legendary, man. I, I can't. It has to be. I mean, it has to be. You can't fake that kind of confidence. But what's so beautiful about that confidence is he wasn't like Kanye or Ye, or he's just constantly coming from a place of insecurity saying, you know, I'm the biggest, I'm the best, I'm the this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he never had to say that. No. Everybody else was saying that. And he was just going to the bank and, (laughs) you know, making his stuff. You're looking at a person that's dealing with something that maybe eight people in the world or 20 people in the world have had to deal with. Yeah. That level of fame. It's a very unique experience. That yeah. level of responsibility on yeah. your shoulders to carry million dollar movies. You know, people are like, oh, that movie sucked, blah, blah, blah. Do you know how nerve wracking it would I would be if I was leading oh. a, like a three hundred million dollar movie yeah. and it was on yeah. my shoulders to be funny, that pressure would kill you. You yeah, know? It'd be, it'd be hard, yeah. It'd be very hard. And of course you're gonna deal with stuff and you're gonna meet people. I mean, he the great thing about him is he kind of went, you know, to the place of the bubble, Bubble yeah. Hill, yeah. where he was, you know, living his own. But you have to. You have to isolate yourself because yeah. you don't own yeah, the trust yeah, yeah. But now he's kind of coming back. Like, I think he needed to get away to get back to his roots to do good stuff. Yeah. Because like yeah. we were saying, his work started to peter off. It was just basically like, let's just put him in a movie. Yeah. You know? it, it wasn't inspired. It wasn't really him. No, it was a bunch yeah. of. You know, sappy kid stuff or just kind of watered down PG-13 or PG stuff. A lot of his movies had more – the later movies had more to do with the conceit of the movie being something kind of fantastical and weird. And it had less to do with him. What if Eddie Murphy could talk to animals? What if if there were tiny Eddie Murphys inside his head? (laughs) Yes, exactly. What if Eddie Murphy was married to Eddie Murphy, but Eddie Murphy was a big, bad, awful woman? Yeah. Yeah. but then, again, like that, we I mean, said, but then in the funny. middle of that, of course, yeah. of course it is. That's the thing, is even his garbage is watchable because yeah. it's him. Yeah. He never, as bad as some of his movies are, I don't think he sleepwalks through them. No, no. I think he, he tries every he's time. Always he's always got, always, yeah. yeah it's, it's just not his fault. I blame the director. I blame the producers. I blame I, the studios. I think a lot of it's the studio. I blame his the, agents. The studio you know? finally winning his out in people. the end and trying to control him. No, yeah. Eddie, you should do a thousand words. Yeah. It'll because be great. My It'll be great. kid just started a third semester at Brown. and um, Yeah. Yeah. But now he's come back and he's doing more interesting stuff. And I think yeah. he needed yeah. to take a break and just reconnect. I mean, it's so easy to armchair quarterback or it's so easy to judge or it's so easy to say this or that. about yeah. Oh, that person's crazy. And that until you walk in that person's shoes, man, yeah. just because he's got millions, millions, millions of dollars and just because he's got all this stuff or whatever doesn't mean that, that he doesn't have anxiety or pressures right. or right. it's it's an unreal situation to be put in that yeah. kind of situation. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I mean, it's not. I mean, and sometimes it, it it snapped. Martin Lawrence, he had a he had a big a big down. meltdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But a lot of that had to do with him, 
you know, trying to lose weight for bad boy. He was like oh, jogging in this, yeah. you know, aluminum suit in oh, 120 yeah, degree weather. Yeah, and, you yeah, know, he's crazy. He had like a, a, a dehydration dementia or something yeah. that, you know. But I mean, I will say to Murphy's credit, even though all that pressure, all that stuff, like he didn't have, they tried to, to make controversial stories about him mm-hmm. and none of them stuck because he was like, I'm just doing my work. He was doing my thing. Seemed private. Yeah. Good family man. Seemed to care a lot about his kids. I think he kind of disappeared for a while to, to raise his kids. Your man has 10 kids. It's a lot of kids, man. There's a lot of children's. Yeah. Well, he, <laughs> he can afford 10 kids. I he, that's why he did a thousand words. He needed to keep feeding his kids. He's got a thousand kids, um, but I just I have such a soft spot in my heart for him because he's such a hero of mine. Yeah, and yeah. he's he just I don't want him to fade away. I want him I, to come I, back he's, strong. He's and not. Hard, he's man. not. He's got that new Netflix movie coming up. Uh, I I will see anything he does. Uh, it yeah. Doesn't matter what it is because I know it'll be entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he'll be entertaining. It, it might not be entertaining, but he'll be entertaining. Well, it'll be entertaining because he's in it. Yeah. But, like, yes, yes. It but might I, not be good. Would you like to see him come back and do stand-up? I would totally go see him do stand-up. I'm just, I'm torn with that. I'm torn. I mean, yeah. I would, honestly, yes. I would like to. I, I think that he would be good. I think it'd be very different from his be, yeah. early stuff. I think it'd be I, interesting to see what he talks about. But, now. yeah, I think you it'd know. be fun to see. I, I'd like to see what he does. His life has really changed since the last time he did it. Yeah. You know? Well, we are out of time. Well, there's just so much to talk about when you're talking about Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> the love of Murphy. Yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, starting our Animation Madness. Yeah, March, March Madness, March animation, animation Madness. madness. <laughs> Charles Schultz. we got Chuck Jones, the Chucks. Chuck, the two Chucks. And, and uh, uh, some uh, Matt Groening. A little Matt Groening rolled in there. A little the, Somebody a little bit old, three, a little younger. Three fantastic animators and illustrators. Yeah, and that changed the, the course of animation. Animation masters. And cartoons. Yeah. And yeah. comic strips. It did. The TV. TV uh, feature animation and, uh, well, feature short animation. A good grief, eat my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for listening. We'll be back next week. Hey, it's eleven eleven. Make a wish. Woo. I wish, I wish that you this. would get this done right. <laughs> <laughs>